All right, good evening. Good evening. All right, we're going to start and pick up where we left off six weeks ago when you all left me. Um, we're going to go back and look at Luke. I left you. We're going to be in Luke chapter 3. Um, he's not here, so again, I'll thank him for not uh, for, for taking over and filling in for me while I was gone. Um, And if you have not heard, we do have a new baby in the church. Sierra had, huh? I remember, uh, e- e- Ethan, is that what I said? Ethan? Ethan. Ethan, yeah. Ethan, now it just left me. Benaya, ben- Benaya, Benaya, there it is. Ethan Benaya. Um, you, 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 Eutychus, Walls. He, he's a proud grandpa. Eli, yeah, Eli, yeah. V e n i a h. The Bible. Yeah, you have to look that up. Huh? Yeah. Eutychus, E-U. <laughs> keep watching where you're going, boy. We are in Luke chapter 3. All right, let's uh, pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for uh, another day, for life. Uh, Lord, we've uh, just experienced it all today with uh, Ginger's uh, funeral and um, the birth of this new baby. We thank you for him and for Sierra, and we ask for recovery for them. And, Father, for um, just for the freshness of of what you do, Lord. Every day is new. Every day your mercies are new, and you are great. You are holy um, and just. And uh, Father, we come to you today just confessing that we desperately need, we need you. Um, We need you to um, empower us and remind us of your goodness and your grace, that you are always with us, that you never leave us and forsake us. And Father, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's rehash and remember some things here. We talked about introduction, chapter 1. The first four verses was Luke's declaration, determination, um, and dedication. And in part 2 were events relating to his coming. Um, we looked at the announcements, um, the advent, the coming of, Christ, of John the Baptist, and the coming of Christ. Um, and then we got down to the commencement. We made it all the way to... Uh, through verse 22 of chapter 3 of Luke. Um, we're going to pick it up from there. Um, and uh, the end of, of chapter or, or chapter 3, 21 and 22, deal with John the Baptist's testimony about Jesus' um, Jesus's baptism. He showed up there and was baptized. Uh, the Holy Spirit descended. Um, and then we're going to pick up in verse 23. Uh, through the end of the chapter tonight, um, and, and and Luke starts out in this section with really a footnote. Um, it just kind of tells us about Jesus and himself and, and his ministry. Um, and so, what is it? What does it say at the first sentence? What does it tell us about Jesus? He was thirty years old when he began his ministry. Why was that significant? Why was that important that he was thirty years old? That's when they were considered a man. Okay, what else? Absolutely, that's when priests would begin their ministry. He's two for two. All right, anybody else want to chime in here? <laughs> no, you'll be all for one if you get wrong. Um, the other, um, see, 
uh, important people that were uh, started their ministry. Joseph, remember Joseph, right? He was elevated to second in behind Pharaoh when he was thirty years old. Uh, David was thirty years old when he became king. Uh, the Levites took up their duties at the age thirty. The scribe, when he uh, when he started writing. Um, he would have been 30 years of age. So it was a very important time in a Jewish man's life. Um, it was considered <laughs> the prime of life. He would have been. He would, yeah. 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 So it would have been the prime of life at the age of 30. So. Then he goes into this long list of genealogy. And most of the time when you come to genealogies in the Bible, you go, uh, next. <laughs> right? I don't need this. Let's move on. But I want to really look at this list. Um, because Luke's genealogy is not the same as that of Matthew. It is different. Matthew's was to... Um, link onto the list of names and chronicles. By the way, in the Jewish Bible, you know, in our Bible, we read in the end of the Old Testament, the last book is Malachi. In the Jewish Bible, the last book is Chronicles. Okay? It's Chronicles. Um, and so they would list all of these people, and then they would end... And then they would pick up, and Matthew would pick up his list, and they would look, they would come together. So it's almost as if they're one big book um, that he's writing here. Um, and and the, the idea there was to establish the claim of Jesus to the throne of David. And so Matthew gives the Lord's ancestry through Joseph who apparently adopted Jesus. So it goes through Joseph. Luke gives the Lord's ancestry through Mary. Okay? Uh, Matthew goes back as far as David, the founder of the Hebrew ro royal family, and then leaps back to Abraham, the founder of the Hebrew racial family. Luke takes his ancestry of Jesus all the way back to Adam, the first man, the founder of the human race. Okay, so Matthew traces his line <clears throat> through Solomon, um, the son of David and Bathsheba. Luke traces his line through David, but Luke goes through a hidden line through a man by the name of Nathan, another son that had been born to David and Bathsheba. And they go, instead of going through, um, all the way through that line, uh, it goes all the way to uh, Mary. So let's, let's read this, and then we'll come back and look at it. Um, if I slaughter the names, that's okay. You can make them up as well as I can. Um, Jesus began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being as was supposed, the son of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Matthai, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Jana, the son of Joseph, the son of Mattathiah, the son of Amos, the son of Naaman, Nahum, the son of Esla, the son of Nagai, the son of Maath, the son of Mattathiah, the son of Shimea, the son of Joseph, the son of Judah, the son of Joannes, the son of Resa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltai, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adai, the son of Kosum, the son of Elm Odam, the son of Ur, the son of Johas, or Joseph, the son of Eleazar, the son of Joram, the son of Metat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonan, the son of Elohim, the son of Meliah, the son of Menon, the son of Mattiah, 
the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Solomon, the son of Nashon, the son of Abinadab, the son of Ram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Sarag, the son of Re, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalah, the son of Canaan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. All right. So <clears throat> let's go back and look at these. Look at verse 23. Luke is very careful about some things, all right? And he says something in verse 23 that is unique and different. What does he say about uh, Jesus? He's 30 years old. What else? Why does he put that in there? Supposedly, supposed the son of, not supposedly, but supposed the son of Joseph. Okay, all right. It's leaning toward the fact that he might have been adopted by Joseph. That's why it's in there like that. Whose son was he? God's. But here Luke is saying supposed son of um, supposed son of Joseph. So it's a little different. Um, he is. He was not the son of Joseph. He was a long-awaited son of the woman that we read about in Genesis chapter 3 uh, verse 14 and 15 uh, which was the first prophecy in scripture Joseph was the husband of Mary uh, he seems to have had adopted Jesus formally um, in the temple when Joseph married Mary the regal line through Solomon the natural line through Nathan were then united so their marriage brought these two lines that the Messiah was supposed to go through, brought them together, okay? They were probably not even aware of that, um, which is the interesting thing. Um, but throughout the history of the kings of Judah, we see Satan. We see him attacking, and we see him attacking. And he's trying to corrupt and destroy the royal seed. Um, he, he seduced Solomon into having hundreds of marriages and concubines and turned him into an adulterous and a foolish man. Um, his oppressions eventually brought about in the, in, in the nation a massive rebellion in the nation of Israel, a civil war which split the two tribes, the northern tribe and um, the, the, the southern tribe. Um, and through those tribes, we've seen many of the kings. We've seen people like Jehoshaphat, uh, who was a good king, um, who uh, married his son to Atahalia. Atahalia. Does anyone know who her mom and dad were? Atahalia was mom and dad were Ahab and Jezebel. So here was this good king who had a son and this evil king who'd had a horrible wife and he was evil himself and they had a daughter and they married him together and do you think it turned out good? No, it turned out terrible. Um, uh, <clears throat> Manasseh uh, came from that. Manasseh had a long reign but his reign was evil um, and he plunged Judah into excesses of wickedness that it never Recovered, um, And then there was a man in 1 Kings 24, 6, uh, by the name of Jehoiachin, or Jeconiah, or Coniah. They're all the same. He infuriated God so much. Um, by the way, if you're here for Good News Club, you know what he did. You remember that story? What did he do? Who was here? Just Jenny? You remember what he did? Jeconiah? He took God's word and he, he burned it. 
Yeah, oh, cotton's here. I missed the cotton. Um, so he, he, he burned it up, right? And, uh, um, he, he, and so God pronounced the curse on him that, that, that no one from his um, descendant would ever sit on the throne of David. So Satan tried all of that, but it was all in vain. Uh, while Satan was so zealous, seeking the overthrow of the royal line uh, through Solomon, all the time God had a, another line, and that was through a man by the name of Nathan. So, which just tells us this. Satan knows a lot. Okay? Satan knows a lot. Satan is not God. Satan is not omniscient. He is not all-knowing. Satan is not all powerful. God is. Satan is not everywhere. He's only one place. Okay? He's only one place. He has these little minions that go out and do things and cause problems, but he's only in one place at one time. So, um, Satan does not. Does, and by the way, Satan does not make you do things. Most of the time, you just do it on your own. Okay? Um, so that, that, that's in there. Okay, so in summary, okay, so let's look at this, this section. In summary, we're going to look at three stages. Um, the first stage is the royal line. The royal line is verse 24 through 31, and it embraces the secret years, um, those years that God was hiding this line to protect this line from Satan. So look at verse 24. These guys name the son of Metat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Jana, the son of Joseph, the son of Mattathiah, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Ezla, the son of Nagai, uh, the son of Math, the son of Mattathiah, the son of Shemai, the son of Joseph, the son of Judah, the son of Joannes, the son of Rasha. Okay, so um, you, you've heard some of those names before, um, but it's probably not the, the guys you're thinking of. Uh, when he says it's the son of Joseph, it's not G Jesus' earthly father. It's not Joseph that was at, in Egypt. Okay, it's neither one of those guys. It's, it's another guy. So these are lines that we've never heard of, but this was the, the royal line. Um, and this, this ancestry is going to make its way all the way back to David. Look at the rest of that verse, verse 27. Zerubbabel, you've probably heard of him. Uh, the son of uh, Sheltai, the son of Nera the son of Melchi, the son of Adai, the son of Kosim, the son of Elmadam, the son of Ur, the son of Joseph, the son of Eleazar, the son of Joram, the son of Metat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonah, Jonan, the son of Elikim, the son of Meliah, the son of Menan, the son of Matthiah, the son of Nathan, the son of David. So we've made it all the way back to David, but yet many of those names we don't, we don't know. Um, we we just don't we don't know who who they are, um, but they're listed here, um, and so they had importance, and their importance was to continue this line and keep this line going all the way through to Jesus. Then, uh, thirty uh, two through the first part of thirty four, we're going to look at um, what's known as the religious line, um, not the not the uh, not the royal line, but the religious line going back from David to Abraham. He says, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashon, the son of Abinadab, the son of Ram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham. So he goes back, and we know more about those people, right? We recognize some of those names, yes? Do you? All right. So we go back, and we know that some of those people are important. We look at some of those names, names like Abraham and Jesse and Boaz, right? What was Boaz before he got married? He was ruthless. Nah. No, no. Ed's not, Ed's not even here. He was ruthless, right? That who did he marry? He married Ruth, the Moabitess, right? Um, and, and Jesus came through that one. And then you got Salmon. Who is Salmon? Does anybody know who he married? If you get a gold star for the day, if you would get this one right, buddy. You've heard of her. Y'all heard of her, but you probably don't know who he, who he married. 
Salmon was the husband of a woman by the name of Rahab, the harlot. Yep, sure was. You would have gotten a gold star. I'll give you one anyway, even though because you thought of it. <clears throat> and then he goes on, keeps going back, and he goes back to Judah and Jacob and Abraham, right? Um, he mentions the name Perez. All right, here's extra credit and a gold star. Who is the mother of Perez? Who is the mother of Perez? And what's the story behind it? <laughs> no Googling, Jenny. No, no, no. The mother of Perez was Tamar. Tamar. Tamar married Judah's oldest son, who died. And by Jewish custom, Jewish law, she was he was required to give her the second son so that the first son could his his seed could continue on. He didn't do he gave her the second son his, her, his second son, and he died. And because he, after he died, he, he told him that he could have the third son when he got older, but he didn't. Exactly, exactly. Uh, a B, you didn't get the answer. <laughs> so Genesis 38, so all of that is in there. I mean, all of that's in there. Um, so you get all that history in there and everything else. And, um, you go along that sacred history. There are names there when, uh, you know, when Saul was king, when Samuel spoke, when the judges ruled. All those are in there. Um, and the interesting thing is this sacred line through all of that history was preserved by God. It was preserved by God. Now, Joshua uh, was conquering Canaan, and Moses was in there, and Sinai back and back. I mean, we keep going. And the Spirit of God is just recording this and keeping this line going and Satan is over here thinking okay God you're going this way you're going this way and you're and as you're going that way God I'm going to I'm going to destroy this line so that you can't have your son come through this line but yet God in his grace and his majesty um, and his holiness still uses people like Tamar and Rahab and Judah to do what he has called them to do. Um, and, and so it's just an amazing thing. And as you keep looking and you see this thing, you see Abraham and, and Ur receiving this vision and, and the world's noisy events are filling up as pe things are going on and the world is, is, is nuts and crazy. God is silently working behind the scenes doing what he wants to do. You turn on the TV today and you turn on the news and all you hear about is Ukraine and Ukraine and everything else. God is silently working his plan out to perfection. Um, and his plan out to perfection is to eventually work it out so that we are taken out and then the church will um, be gone and the nation of Israel will back, be back in the, in the throne again. Um, and then look at the last part, the racial line, um, 34 through 38. In 34, he says, the son, of, the son of Jacob, son of Isaac, the son of Abraham. We know these names. The son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Sarag, the son of Re, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxed, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahala, the son of Canaan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam. So when you go down through there, you, you look at these, these names. These are names you've heard of, right? These are names that we read about in, in Genesis. We read about some of the things that went on. And you say, okay, I, I recognize his name. What do we know about Enoch? He 
he did not die. God took him out. He went for a walk with God and never came back, right? Uh, he was gone. He was here one second, gone another. A picture of the rapture. Um, what do we know about Methuselah? Oldest man. 969 years old. Some may, people may feel like they're that old. Um, I can't imagine living that long, right? 900, what else do you know about Methuselah? He had lots of kids. Do you know what his name means? What did you say? The old one? No. Is Noah's grandpa. His name means something along the lines of um, when he is gone, judgment will come. Okay? something along those lines and when you do a study and it's a really I, I just I love stuff like this because I just kind of pull it apart and start looking at it and go this is really cool when you do a study and you do a timeline and you take Adam and you write down Adam and how many years he lived and who lived underneath him and all this stuff and you're coming along on here you see how long Adam was alive and how many generations were there and how many great 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 grandkids he would have or may have known, right? I mean, it's it's amazing. When you come to Methuselah and you do the nine, the year that he was born, and you took, go and you go 969 years, guess what year he died? The year of the flood. The year of the flood. He wasn't on the ark. <laughs> he died the year of the flood. We're not told if he died in the flood or if he died the year that the flood happened. We think that he, that, that God, you think God took him out before the flood came? It, 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 it would picture, that would be a picture of God's grace, and it would also be a picture of the church being raptured from the world before the tribulation period takes place. So I, 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 I'm with you. I agree that it probably, he probably died because it said he died. Doesn't say if he died in the flood or before the flood, but I think he died before the flood actually took place. That's just my own opinion. Um, I'm pretty sure there's good theologians who agree with me, and there's bad theologians who disagree with me. So, um, but that's <laughs> you're near there. Um, That was a that was a Jewish thing though, but you, that's a Jewish thing. And the Methuselah Abraham hadn't come around yet, so the Jewish nation has not been established. So <clears throat> who knows? Um, so I mean, you, you look at this Enoch, Methuselah, uh, you know, no uh, Enoch's in there. Um, uh, who else is in there that we know? Um, Noah, of course, um, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, um, the son of Canaan, the son of Enosh. Of course, you've heard of the son of Seth. Seth was born after Cable and Ain. Uh, Cable, Abel killed Cain. Whew, wow. Um, and then he goes back to Adam. And God calls a halt with Adam, right? And, he, and then he says what about Adam? The what? The Son of God, right? The Son of God. Right? So, and I think Scripture says Seth was born to replace able and take his place and so it came through that line I wasn't going to go through Cain because Cain killed his brother right and it couldn't go through Abel I mean it could have gone through Abel if had Abel Abel you know been resurrected or you know or or had children beforehand but it wasn't going that way and God didn't plan it that way so it went through Seth um but then he says the son of God um to one whom we know as God the Son. So this line goes from Adam, the Son of God, to 
Jesus, the God's Son. Um, yes, our God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yes. So God takes us back to the first Adam and then to the second Adam and from the first man to the second man. And in doing so, he, employ, he employs 75 names in doing so, which is a, a unique way in recording the coming and going of 60 generations of time. But God always had um, a great love for his people, especially um, his own people. Right? He has, and so he writes to them and he includes them them and he includes their names and he includes their life and he includes uh, them in the in this process because God loves you and God loves me and so he writes them in his book in this book for you the question for us is is your name written in his book the book of life that's the important part question so um, and then we go into chapter four and chapter four deals with uh, Satan tempting Jesus, and we're going to go ahead and get started in that for about 10 minutes, maybe. Um, <clears throat> the time, the place, and the circumstances of his temptation um, were not picked by Jesus. They were picked and chosen by the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 1. Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Who did that? Who told him to go into the wilderness? The Holy Spirit. He's leading him. He's guiding him. He's taking him along here. Jesus has come back from his baptism. He's anointed with the filling of the Holy Spirit. And immediately he's led by the Spirit to go to the wilderness. Who do you think was relishing in this? Here is Christ. Yeah, he's on a high. And here comes Satan. You ever been on a spiritual high? And the next thing that happens is, man, troubles come. I'm telling you, if you're ever on a spiritual high, you better be, be careful because the devil's watching. And he's going, hmm, okay, now's the time. His minions, get him, sick him. Because this is just happening. Um, and it's, it, it happens all the time, and you have to be careful about it. Uh, man born in sin and shapen in iniquity from the time of Adam has gone through, through these, these whole things. And, and they, they have all, every single one of them have been, um, uh, of us, have fallen tempta into temptation and fallen into sin. And for us, for mankind, we for Satan, we are pushovers, okay? Uh, but Jesus is a different story because Jesus is God, and the devil knew that he was God. And although Jesus is going to be tempted as a man, Satan has never met a man like this man, all right? Um, and so here is this man filled with the Holy Spirit, without sin, without any desire to sin, the devil... Now the roaring lion was once the, the anointed cherub. Uh, and now he's the god of this world, the prince of the power of the air. The fallen angel is undoubtedly a great force and not to be taken lightly. Okay? And yet, when all is said and done, he is still a created creature who must answer to God. Okay? Um... And so Jesus knew all about that. And Jesus did not underestimate him, but Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. And I can't get, you know, throw that enough at you. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He, he, Jesus, the Son of God, needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If he needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit when he was tempted, how much more do we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Okay? He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And so... Uh, this battle is going to take place. The site is chosen by the Holy Spirit. The site is a wilderness. Um, the traditional setting is a mountainous, barren 
uninhabited region that ascends toward Jerusalem from, uh, from Jericho. Um, it is off uh, to the right, not far from Jericho. There's this limestone peak that is there, and it, it, it is just utter desolation. All right? So if you've ever been to, to uh, out west to Utah, and driving along, and we, we took Lisa's mom out there. We were moving her out there, and I was driving the, the U-Haul truck, and she was driving the, the car with her mom and one of the kids, and I had two, the two boys with me, and we're driving along, and we got out in there, and the sign said, last stop for gas for, and I, I can't remember how many miles. It was like 70-some miles. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. And then we kept going. There was absolutely nothing out there. Every once in a while, we'd go out, and we'd go, oh, cow. What's it doing out here, you know? And, and, and this is what we're talking about. I mean, this is utter desolation. No people, no, n- no gas stations, no, no McDonald's, all right? You are on your own. And so Jesus is out here, um, and, and the temptation is going to continue and go on for 40 days. Um, and Hebrews says he was tempted in all points as we are. All right, he and, and so this battle comes to the head, and 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 I think the, the picture that we get in this whole thing is that uh, Jesus was tempted three times. Now that's all that's recorded. I think this is a forty-day temptation. It is constant, and that's the way Scripture is written, and Scripture implies that this is a constant temptation that goes one after another, after another, after, and it keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger until. These last part, after 40 days, uh, it tells us what's going on. So, uh, so when we see this, we think about this, Jesus is by himself for 40 days. Now, I don't know about you. I like being alone. You know that. I'm an introvert. I like being alone. I can handle it. But some people cannot handle that. Right? And I could handle it for a little while. When I was driving from Massachusetts, or from from South Carolina to Massachusetts in 16 hours by myself, there were times where I'd be like, I need to talk to somebody. Or, more importantly, I need somebody to talk to me. So it'd be like, huh, who am I going to call? And so I'd call Lisa, and I'd FaceTime with her, and she would talk to me with Jackson or Oliver while she's doing whatever, because I needed that. Can you imagine being alone for 40 days? 40 days. You remember the pandemic that hit back in March of 2020? Do you remember... Do you remember that time when they said nobody should come out of their house? When they said nobody should go to work? Remember that time? Nobody can go anywhere, and you're stuck with Fred. <laughs> I did not say that, Fred. <laughs> and, 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 and people were all alone. Do you know what happened and what's happened because of that? Where is it? What do we have? We have kids that are still dealing with depression anxiety, fears, hope that's Jesus. Yeah. Because of that. And and and, and it, it's 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 there's more there's more kids at a younger age today dealing with that than ever before. Um, because of just being cooped up and not being allowed to see their friends or do anything or and and, 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 and and don't you know, the devil knows that. God has designed us to relate to one another. He's designed us that way, to be able to come alongside each other and help each other and encourage each other. And, so we, and, and we need that. And so Jesus is here for 40 days. And not only is he out there in the wilderness by himself for 40 days, dude is not eating or drinking. 40 days. With no, with no food. I, I, 
every single time. It, it, and you think about, I mean, we did a 40-hour fast with our teenagers, and we came back to the church after 38 hours, and we were sitting there, and we're going over some things with them and doing some different things and, and waiting, and, and we had the, some moms say they would make deal f- dinner for us. Do you know what it's like for a teenager to go without food for 40 minutes? We're talking 40 hours from the time Friday uh, lunch till Saturday evening. They didn't eat. They didn't eat. And these ki- and we made we made a lot of mistakes in that. First thing we did was we helped in a, in a kitchen. I was like, what are we thinking? Right. And then we made another mistake. We came back to the church at hour 38. We had two hours left, and the moms are making dinner in the kitchen at the church. I had this one teenage boy that was he was he was a lineman for his, the football team, and he was like, "I'm going to tear those doors off." And we warned him. We're like, "When you go to eat, I know you're tempted that you want to eat all that stuff right up, as, but you're going to make yourself sick." And guess what they did? They tore into it, and guess what they did? They were sick. Uh, why didn't you tell us? We did tell you. Why didn't you listen? Look at verse one. Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. He wasn't tempted just three times. He was tempted 40 days by the devil. And in those days, he ate nothing. He ate nothing. And afterward, when they were ended, they had ended, and and here's the most underrated sentence in Scripture. He was hungry. He was hungry. Yeah, he was hungry. If he could have found a locust, he probably would have eaten it. I mean, his cousin John did, right? So he, it's, it's almost, when you think about it, 40 days, that's almost six weeks without eating. You can go 40 days without eating. And the Lord was weakened. And Satan chose this time to really attack him. And so we're going to look at the first temptation, and then we'll come back and look at it again next week. But I just wanted to begin begin our thinking through this. He said, but Jesus answered him, and he said, it is written, uh, verse 3, the devil said, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered him and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So the first temptation comes along the, the, the will of God. The will of God. Look 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 at verse three again. And just just picture picture this devil, however you want to picture him with red tights and po, 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 pointy ears and right, a tail or however you want to picture him, right? Roaring lion looking at Jesus after 40 days of not eating saying look at you look at you you're famished you are you are nothing but skin and bones you're hungry no you're not hungry you're starving to death you got nothing Listen to me. Listen to me. And you can have fast food. Instant sustenance. You claim to be God? Then behave like God. You claim to be God? You claim to have been living in a palace? And look at these rocks. Look at them. Turn them into stone. It was a temptation where Jesus could have had instant gratification. Could Jesus have turned those rocks into bread? Absolutely. We saw him do what? Miracles with just a couple loaves of bread and five fish. We saw him turn water into wine. He could do that. But Jesus knew that was not the center 
of God's will. He had been led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness. He had been led to take a long fast, and he had no word from God to break it. If he, if he did not act at once, he would not die. So the temptation leaped upon him. And there is a desperate need here. He's hungry. But Satan, Jesus looks at this, what Satan says, and realizes this is a lie. This is a lie. And so he says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And that's it. His life was not run by circumstances, no matter how demanding it was. It was run by the word of God. He would stop his fast when God said, it's time to stop your fast. He would stop his fast when the Holy Spirit said, this is for you. He dismissed it out of hand, out the hand, out of hand the implication that God might let him starve to death. He knew he had come into this world not to starve to death, but to die on a cross and to pay for our sins. He refused to take matters into his own hand. Oh, only if we would listen to what he was saying to us. Don't get ahead of God. Trust your Father. He knows what He's doing. Trust the Father. He knows what He's doing. He has a plan in each and every one of your lives, and trust Him in everything. Everything. Trust Him. Times may get tough, but Jesus is tougher. Times may be hard, but living for Jesus is the best way we can live our life. Trusting Him, leaning on Him, and not on our own understanding. Amen? We have two more temptations. We'll pick that up next week. Let's go ahead and look at our prayer sheets. Did you get one, Miss Debbie? Where would you put them, Dave? Thanks, Scott. Not touching it with a Snickers in your pocket? Well, if you went 40 days with a Snickers in your pocket, I wouldn't eat it afterwards anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> I wouldn't make it 40 days anyway with a Snickers in my pocket. All right. Um, so, prayer requests, praises, updates. Okay. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, I would think they would, I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't know. After, after Lindsay and who knows. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So remember those, the Davis family, Bethany and. Brian. Continue to pray for Ginger's family. What else? Okay.
So, um, and just fill us back in, uh, fill us back in, fill us in again. When, um, when is viewing? When is the, the visitation? And where? Okay. That's all right. Okay. Don't buy gas from them. BP, don't buy gas from them. They get their gas from Russia. Go ahead. Okay. So, and it's um, it's what's what's the name of the funeral home that's handling Curry Funeral Home? So if you if you look it up in uh, online um, Curry Funeral Home. You can find the obituary. It'll tell you where it is and what time Saturday. Okay. Okay. I hope he's not long-winded. The preacher today wasn't too long-winded. He must be a good guy. All right. All right, so be in prayer for her family, and that, that's Saturday. Um, 11 o'clock is viewing, 12 o'clock. Yes, yes ma'am. Mm. What, Kathy? B-E-R, B-E-A-R-I-S-F-O-R-D. B-E-R, no A. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Where's Don? Fourth. Okay. And we can take my grandma off. She's doing better. My grandma, Helen Bartlett. She's doing gooder. Mm-hmm. Um, it was Judy that was telling me about um, Frank and Penny Wingo, that he's gone through two of his chemos. And seems to be doing okay. He's not feeling that great, but remember him, and especially remember Penny. She's getting really bad. So yeah, Scott. All grandkids are great, Scott. <laughs> These are greater. Hey, hey, look. When you get as many as Methuselah, then we'll talk, okay? <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations. Let's continue praying for Sierra and the baby. Ethan. Yeah, she had him this afternoon. 320. Uh, 320, 321, something like that. Yeah, Ethan, Benaya, Eutychus, Walls. Probably not Eutychus, but I just throw that in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I gave her the suggestion, you know, that... <laughs> I was maybe be Eutychus, yeah. <laughs> All right. I know, I know. All right, anything else? Jenny? Pray for our daycare workers, ones we have. And, um, 
Yeah, and that they they need help. Um, they are four four short. You use four more people. Um, they're pulling overtime, and it's just it's hard to get people to work today. So pray for that. Okay. Um, pray for our country, our world. We we need a revival. Yes, ma'am. Pray for your boys. Pray for Curtis. He, um, raising children is never easy, but I think it's harder today than maybe ever before. Um, they're being pulled in 2,000 ways all at the same time in 2,000 different directions. And it's hard to get them to focus and direct it toward the, the, the right way. So pray for our young people, for their parents. Um, and, um, yeah, that's why we need programs like um, Trail Life to help direct them in that direction. There you go. I'll give you a plug. Anything else? All right, let's go ahead and pray silently, and then I'll close in a few moments. God, we thank you again for another day, another time to worship you and praise and we'll lift your name on high. I thank you for how great you are. Um, 
Lord, I thank you for your word, which tells us that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we can say, God, that you are our refuge, you are our fortress, you are our strength. In you, we can put our trust. Uh, Father, you, uh, we pray, Father, that you will deliver us from the snares of the enemy, Lord. And, uh, Father, I pray that you would bind our hearts um, toward you. I pray that, Lord, as we face temptations and struggles and trials, that we'd be reminded of Jesus' temptations that in each one of his temptations he used the word of God to combat combat against the evil one so father I pray that you will help us to be in the word to be hearers of the word and to be doers of the word Uh, father I pray that through it all Lord you would find our walk with you and our work for you acceptable in your sight. Lord, I thank you for that. I pray for those that have lost loved ones, uh, Ginger's family and Jasmine's family, and uh, Father, for uh, Laura's family, that you would just encourage them, comfort them, draw near them. Lord, we praise you for that. We pray, Father, for Bethany with her uh, cancer. Uh, Father, we pray for removal of all of that cancer from her body. Lord, we pray for complete healing for her, for uh, Frank Wingle as well. Uh, Lord, we pray for him. Uh, Lord, we pray for Penny. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, those that are unsaved. Uh, Lord, I pray that we might um, we might talk to them and show them the love of Jesus Christ and be your hands and your feet and your mouth and talk to them about Jesus' great love. Lord, I praise you for um, Sierra and little Ethan and Lainey and Lindsay and Heather and Graham. Uh, Father, we thank you for them. We pray for Madison um, and her little guy as she prepares to deliver. Uh, Lord, I pray for um, a healthy delivery. I pray for your will. And I pray, Father, that you would speak to speak through the, to them as they go through it, Lord, and that they would just praise you. Uh, Lord, I thank you for it. Lord, I thank you for um, for our world and where we are today. Uh, and Father, I count it all joy, as James tells us, that as we go through these times and these struggles and this time period that we live in, that you have called us to this time for this purpose to tell others about your great love for them and father i thank you for it lord may your spirit go before us may you lead us may you guide us and may you fill us as we leave here to worship and glorify you in everything we say and do and we give you all the praise all the honor because you alone are worthy of all of it lord you have given us your son who gave his life so that we might have eternal life. And for that, we can only be praising you and thanking you for it. In Jesus' holy and precious name, and all God's people said, amen. All right, don't forget, church, this week, even if it snows. Time change. Now, we spring ahead, so we lose an hour of sleep. I'm going to go home and make it up right now. All right, don't forget to set your clocks ahead so you're not, would would that make you late for church? Don't be late for church. You want me to call you when I get up and come to church? You sure about that? Six o'clock? I'll just call Fred. All right, don't forget, set your clocks ahead. You've been told, you've been warned.